Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Sarnet Television. Well, Chris has got something in his hands. I believe it is an M2 and he's going to be taking it apart. Let's go over to Chris right now. Well, thank you, Stuart. Wheel and Engineering's M2. This one happens to be the AC variant, so amber diodes, clear outer polycarbonate lens. Available in solid colors, split colors as well. So if you're looking for a red-blue split, red-white split, it's got you covered. For the solid colors, like I mentioned, this happens to be a clear lens. You can get it color matched as well. So if you'd like your blue to have a blue lens, red to have a red lens, go ahead, order is appropriate. I'm going to show you what's inside the lens here to give you a better idea of how the electronics and the diodes are set up prior to the optics in the front here that boost them from the electronics board inside here. On the back, I'm going to go ahead, straighten out the pigtail harness. You can see it's a four wire, so lead, ground, sync, and the white with violet, the scan lock for adjusting flash patterns. Rubber grommet, no, rubber gasket on the back of the unit here. Go ahead, slide that off. As you can see, nice and heavy duty, nice and durable as well. Center for your wiring, two holes for your bolts or screws to go through here. And so when you have it mounted on your application, this will seat against the chrome or the paint finish to keep grit and grime from getting into the back of the light head. Two screws go through the back black cast housing here into the front lens. Also, yellow Gore-Tex breather, which allows air to escape from the front of the unit here for heat dissipation. Two little black screws here. Green epoxy coating on here just helps to keep the screw seal with the cast housing here. With that removed, I can go ahead, get a finger under the edge here, and give it a little wiggle, lens will pop right off. The front, one piece molded polycarbonate UV resistant lens, incorporates a black rubber gasket here, so when the unit is re-screwed together, the gasket compresses into the black cast housing here to hold the unit together nice and tight and keeping grit, grime, condensation from getting inside. Second piece here is an optics booster. So as you can see, one piece unit here, and it's a dished unit. So the thinner portion here, or the narrower of the diameter, will go over the diodes, widens out in the top here so it increases the spread that the diode gives. I'll go ahead, flip this portion over, and get the harness out of the way to give you a better look at the inside of the light head itself. As you can see, six diodes, so three on top, three on bottom, nicely laid out to create a good even spread throughout the entire surface of the light head. Electronics as appropriate, center four soldering posts for the harness input, so again, the lead, the ground, the sink, the flash pattern. From there, the electronics disperse out to the diodes and various other small base componentry to make the light head function how it needs to for you. And you can see here, the lip in the cast housing is where the gasket here will push into to keep it nice and solid for your application and nice and solid for the light head itself. Again, there's no parts in here that'll wiggle loose. It goes together very nice, very tightly. So no condensation, no grime, no vibration or anything to wiggle loose. So if this is going on rigs that are gonna see a lot of time off the pavement, there's no filaments, nothing to wiggle loose or break on you like in old generation halogen components. So the optic portion here, It'll go ahead, place itself back over onto the front. Lens here, slide that back into place. Going to go ahead, give it a nice little press down to get the gasket lined back and pressed in to the black. Go ahead, flip it over. And the two screws will go back in place to hold the unit together. Go 
ahead, take the rubber backing. Slide that back down the pigtail here. And then for your mounting use, if you'd like, you can get an additional black flange or a chrome flange. Goes around the light head just to dress up the application and the surface that it's been affixed onto. So I'm gonna go ahead, put power to it. It's a 12 volt specific light head. As I mentioned earlier, this happens to be the amber version. So with that, the lead is an orange trigger wire to signify amber. Let's go ahead, put that to the lead, connect the black to the ground, and there you have it. Light head flashing away, nice and bright. If you go ahead, take the scan lock, momentarily tap it to positive 12 volts, it'll adjust the flash pattern. Just go ahead, give it a few taps here to go ahead, run it through a few patterns so you can see a few of the modes it offers. So now that you've seen the unit on and flashing, I'm gonna show you something else, kind of fun, that the unit can do when it comes to interfacing it with other light heads that you may be using in your application. I happen to have one of the Wheelan Engineering's Vertex LED light heads. This one happens to be amber as well. Both light heads offer solid flashing and that all diodes come on at the same time. So neither one happens to be a split variant. So in the case here, the solid amber and the solid amber of each style light offers the same flash patterns when it comes to the phasing. Not all of them are gonna match 100% across the board. The Vertex has quite a few more than the M series offers, but when it comes to syncing, both units offer similar patterns in the beginning pattern selection, and they have phase one and phase two. So with that, you have patterns where you can make two different series of light heads communicate with each other to set the flashing around your vehicle. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead, reset the M2 here quickly, twist some wires together, light up both of them to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. On the M2, since I've gone ahead, run it through some flash patterns, I'm gonna go ahead and do a default pattern reset with it quickly. So what that entails, put the unit to ground, scan lock will go to power first, then go ahead, take the lead wire, you can see the unit has reset itself. It's gone back to the original signal alert flash pattern. So again, if I disconnect the scan lock, reapply power, you can see it's changed from the mode I had set it to previously, and now it's back to its original. So I'm gonna go ahead, take the clips away. Just gonna double check, make sure the vertex hasn't been set to something different and that I don't need to reset it as well. Turn it away, it is nice and bright so it does get a little blinding. So it looks the same, I'll go ahead, disconnect the wires here. And again, this is just twisting them together kind of crudely here on the table. When you're doing this for your application, use appropriate connections, soldering, butt connectors, heat shrink, terminal blocks, pins. So with the grounds connected, the leads connected, I'm gonna go ahead, take the gray sink wire for the M2 and the green sink wire for the Vertex. Just different colors, different heads. So, three wires, quickly twisted together here. Gonna go ahead, take the alligator clips, turn the units back on. So as you can see, both heads, signal alert pattern. In this case, they happen to both be on a phase one variation. So with that, the phase one simultaneous flashing. Let them go for a second, just so you can go ahead, 
get a good feel for how the Vertex and the M2 can blend together for use on your application. And you can see that with the sync wires connected between the two light heads, the pattern pulse is always going to stay the same. It's not going to start up on you looking the same and then after a couple minutes into the light heads being on, get off pulse from each other. It just happens to be that with some light heads, they both have the same pattern. When they're not synced, they'll kick on, look similar, but after a few seconds, kind of like car blinkers, the rhythm of the flashing will get off, get back on, go back off, and get back on. In this case, everything will stay completely synchronized throughout the entire time it's on. So a few minutes, a few hours, a few days even, everything will stay the same. I'm gonna go ahead, take power away here. I'm gonna advance the flash pattern on the M2 just so you can see how the phase one and phase two variation will work for having an alternating between the two. So just disconnecting the wires, just so I can isolate the M. Scan lock. Now the pattern is just going to hesitate for a quick second when it goes into phase two, but it's going to display the same flash. Now it's been set over to phase two. So I'm going to go ahead, take the clips away, twist the wires back together. Then you'll see how the phase one, phase two is going to work between the two. So with the wires twisted back together, back comes the alligator clips. And there you have it. Light heads come alive, 12 volts is applied. Same flash pattern, phase two, phase one. So that gives you the alternating effect. And again, both light heads connected together through the communication synchronization wire. So as you can see, if you're wanting to use a variety of products around your application, hideaways or surface mount the vertexes, M series around it, you can go ahead, tie the units together, adjust your patterns, adjust your sync wires, and everything will function the way you want it to for your application. So there you have it. A look at the M2 series LED light head from Whelan Engineering, the insides and the outsides, a bit of the flashing, and also the way to tie it in with another product Again, happens to be the Vertex light head to make the heads communicate and flash as appropriate for your vehicle. I'm Chris. Thanks for spending some time with me here on SirenNet Television. Back to you, Stuart. Well, again, Chris, thanks a million for taking the M2 apart. I'm Stuart, and thanks for watching SirenNet Television.